Family, a fundamental social group consisting of one or two parents and their children. In the United States, the average family has 2.013 children. For practicality, we'll round it to two. Of course, those are just statistics. Some families are smaller and some are larger. Some are quite a bit larger. Some just seem to keep growing and growing. gentlemen, meet the Duggars. My name is Joshua Duggar. My name is Jana Duggar. My name is John Duggar. My name is Jill Duggar. My name is Jessa Duggar. My name is Ginger Duggar. My name is Joseph Duggar. My name is Josiah Duggar. My name is Dwayne Duggar. My name is Josiah um, Duggar. My name is Jeremiah Duggar. My name is Jason Duggar. And this is James Duggar, and this is Justin. You say hi. And I'm Jim Bob, and this is my wife, Michelle. Welcome to the Duggar home. If you lost count, allow us to help. That was a total of 14 kids and two sets of twins. And the keen observer might have detected that, yes, number 15 is on the way. As you might expect, the Duggars have a way of drawing attention. And wherever they go, there are always questions. By now, they're often familiar. Are you all one family? Are you just a daycare? What's it like at mealtime, and how much do you have to fix? Wow, how many are there? Are you guys a school group, or are they all yours? Are you Pentecostal? What denomination are you in? Laundry. How do you keep up with, like, what, what's laundry like for your family? Normally, if we go out somewhere, we're lined up. They want to know, are all these yours? Sometimes, um, like, Daddy and Mom will get stopped, and then Joshua. And... I've always thought of it as normal. I guess most people come in and say, man, you guys are really, you know, unusual. To the average parent struggling to keep up with the trials of raising one or two or even three or four kids, 14 children is unusual. But a combination of organization, ingenuity, team spirit, and a heavy dose of faith has helped the Duggars create a world that bears as much resemblance to the Waltons as it does to life here in the 21st century. Although few of us might dream of actually living such a life, perhaps there's something to be learned from this now famous family from Arkansas. Lesson number one must surely be patience. Patience is practiced throughout the day, but never more so than first thing in the morning. Probably the hardest thing about living in this house is it only has two bathrooms. There's always a line, probably like three or four people going, running back from bathroom to bathroom, saying, knocking on every door, saying, hurry, 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 I gotta go to the bathroom, hurry, hurry, hurry. I think that's always the, the challenge we find here. We're waiting in line to go to the restroom. They need to go to the bathroom when they wake up. So we're waiting in line, and when they take a bath, they take like an hour shower. The small house where the Duggars currently live might seem crowded with half the people. With only two bathrooms and one standard-sized residential water heater, the potential problems are obvious. As a result, there are rules that must be followed, and despite Josiah's calculations, one-hour showers are not the rule. We have to split up the showers and baths for, um, like, s the, half the people get them in the morning, half the people get them in the evening, and whoever's the dirtiest gets them first. And <laughs> That's an insider's tip. If you want to ensure a hot shower in the evening, get extra dirty during the day. But before playtime, there is much to be done, far more than any two parents could accomplish. This is one of the Duggars' keys to success. Delegate, delegate, delegate. Central to that is the family's version of the buddy system. The buddy system really means that mom cannot be everywhere at all times, and so my older children help to take care of the younger children. Every Duggar has at least one buddy. If you're too old and need help from a buddy, that means you're ready to take on a younger buddy. A big buddy helps you get dressed, brush your teeth, comb your hair, get your breakfast, do your schoolwork, learn to play violin and piano, and so. They're there to pick you up when you fall and keep track of you when you're out and about. 
Without the buddy system, this house might cease to a halt. No one is exempt from the buddy brigade. Jim Bob's buddy is Michelle, and Michelle reserves the privilege of being each of the children's first buddy. When the baby is born, it's my buddy until it's weaned. And then from there, it goes to the other buddy, whoever's turn it is to get a buddy. That means in just a matter of months, Michelle will soon have a new buddy, baby number 15. The great debate in the house these days is boy or girl. The current count stands at nine boys, five girls. The votes pretty much fall along party lines. I'm hoping it's going to be a boy. I'm hoping it's a, that the baby's going to be a girl. I was hoping for a, a boy, but I thought it was going to be a girl. I just want a baby girl. I'd like a boy, but I know the girls are wanting a girl, so whatever. I would be happy with whatever the Lord gave us. We would be happy with a boy or a girl. I really like another girl, but if a boy comes, it'd be good too, because it would make 10 boys and five girls, and then they'd be half and half, or half and anyway. The boy or girl mystery will be settled before number 15's birthday. Soon an ultrasound will be performed and witnessed by the entire clan. Then they'll know, and we'll know, what and how many are on the way. To some of us, looking forward to child number 15 may seem a bit surreal. In fact, there was a time when even Jim, Bob, and Michelle could not have dreamed of the path their lives would take. It all began in the early 80s when a 17-year-old Jim, Bob, and a 15-year-old Michelle first met. It was a classic tale of love at first sight, sort of. Two and a half years before we were married was the first time we met, but I don't remember that first meeting. I met her actually going out on church visitation, and from the moment I saw her and heard her talk, she was just such a sweet girl that at that point I prayed that she could be mine. And a year later, she went to work at a yogurt shop that my mom was managing, and I asked her to go on a, a date on my senior banquet. And she accepted and went with me, I think just because I was the boss's son. On that first, quote, date was when we talked for the first time that I remember really talking to him. Um, and that was when our, I felt like my heart was knit to his, and I just thought I'd never met a man like this before. Our first date was in May, and the following December, I asked if she would ask her dad if uh, he would give me permission to marry her, and he said yes. My daddy allowed us to get engaged at Christmas, um, and then from there, uh, we were married then six months later in July. And so began the marriage of this future famous couple. At the time, no one would have guessed what lay ahead. When family friend Peggy Bennett first met Jim Bob, she didn't guess. I uh, knew Jim Bob uh, probably in 1976. I uh, started teaching at Shiloh Christian School. It was their first year, and he was in the sixth grade. He was quiet. He, he wasn't one of these boys that were boisterous and very out, you know, outgoing at that time and all, and he was very respectful. As Jim Bob grew from boy to man and his family grew into the double digits, Peggy, along with most everyone else in their small community, looked on in disbelief. No, I never dreamed, you know, they'd have this many, you know, because most people have two or three, you know, and that's about it. A lot of people are really excited about for them having this many, and then some of them say, I cannot believe they're doing this. You hear both sides of it in the community. You really do. Well, some don't like it because they think that's too many children, but I still think if you can handle it and you're able to do it, why, it's all right. I think the most remarkable thing is that she would have that many kids, that she would want to have that many kids. I raised six children, so I really admire Mrs. Duggar and think she's doing a great job. I just wonder if they have a, a large enough income to support a family of that size or if they're going to go on public assistance or um, not be able to support those kids. you got to think of the kids. How many can you support? Finances. Also near the top of the list of the most asked questions. To answer that, let's return again to the early days. Before Jim, Bob, and Michelle were chasing around toddlers, they were chasing a different dream. He liked to buy a car, fix it up, and turn around and sell it and make money on it. Also, he was working at a grocery store. So then he said, well, let's start a car lot. 
Uh, we ended up starting a car business, selling cars on consignment, and also we started a towing business to tow cars for the public and for the police. Of course he had his real estate license. He and I both had a real estate license from the beginning, but then we both got it insurance license and did some of that for a little while. And then we started a convenience store. We worked really hard to get to where we could relax a little bit more now. You heard her. She said relax. After all that, giving birth to 14 kids sounded like a way to slow things down a few notches. But there's one last amazing twist in this entrepreneurial adventure. Uh, 14 years ago, we made a commitment not to go in debt anymore. And so we paid off our old debts, and we've not taken on any new debts. If we don't have the money, we don't buy it. That includes our house, our cars, whatever. We just buy used and save the difference. That's right, no debt. So there's the answer to one more of the most common questions people ask. How do you afford all those kids? Work hard, buy used, and save the difference. Owning some real estate doesn't hurt either. But far and away, the most common question is, why have so many kids? Not surprisingly, that answer has its roots in the Duggars' faith. We didn't start out thinking, we're going to have a lot of children. We're going to have a large family. As a matter of fact, we probably thought maybe three, maybe two, I don't know, maybe four. I don't really know if we really even said a number. We had our first child four years into marriage, and at that point, we decided that we wanted to allow God to give us all the blessings he wanted to give us at that point. Coming up, family management Duggar style. And later, another blessing on the way. 16, they're the family that keeps on growing and growing, and they haven't stopped. It's the Duggars, and since our last house call, baby number 16 is already on the way. Naturally, you're questioning, this is the last one, right? Wrong. <laughs> now, with another new addition, the Duggars are ready for some new digs. We decided to build a house out in the country. Join the Duggars on Raising 16 Children, Wednesday at 8 on Discovery Health Channel. In a house with 14 children, it's hard to imagine there's such a thing as an average day. Not true. A typical day has begun and the well-oiled machinery has started to run. As we know, an army marches on its stomach. But for an army to eat, the larder must be filled. Presenting us with yet another learning opportunity on how the well-organized, army-sized household operates. Step one, food procurement. Oh, we're gonna just we open the van here. Let's see, we gotta go on a shopping trip, so we can't all we can't fit all the food in here without having to take a seat out. So we gotta take out a seat because it's we, once we get all our food in here, it won't fit. So. Hey guys, I think we're gonna need another seat out. So would y'all mind taking one more? shopping trip right now it's been a while we're low on groceries and so we had to take out two seats out of the van to make space for all the cases and um, I'm probably gonna end up taking the eight oldest to help we'll, we'll probably end up getting five grocery carts full it's time to go let's load them up older ones we're gonna go shopping you guys get to go down for napping time. One of the troops is unhappy. Young James, number 13. This looks like a job for a buddy. And with a few additional words of encouragement from Mom, James seems resolved to his fate. One thing is certain in this household. Every child is learning self-control from the outset. It won't take long for James to learn that lesson well. Back to shopping. For most of us, the typical trip to the grocery store might include a short list and a lot of impulse buying. But eight or ten separate impulses could wreak havoc on the pantry and the pocketbook. Sticking to the plan is the plan. Right, and now sometimes I come in with my list and I check off just, you know, just getting a few items. But like right now, I needed to stock up the pantry. And so I know we need a case of, you know, certain items. 
Never come when you're hungry. Yeah. Dad, when Daddy comes. When Daddy comes, we end up getting. Yeah, we get cookies. Cookies and. <laughs> they always enjoy Dad going shopping. Cars get full, we'll kind of park them out of the way up front because there's no reason to push these all the way through the store. They're full. Thank you. Be careful. One flat of the peas. I would have had a full cart, but my sister got in front of me and she got hers filled first. Sorry. Naturally, this van full of groceries is going to have to go somewhere in this small house. Next lesson, the proper organization of a pantry. This is our pantry, and um, I have to say that I'm not the stalker in our family. Jim Bob was a stalker checker for five years at a grocery store. We have um, meals planned, and we shop according to the meals, but then we also will buy all of the things that we know that we will usually eat for the days that we don't get it pulled together <laughs> so that if we're in a in a pinch and we've got to have a quick meal we can come down to the pantry and grab those things that we know we can put together real fast and make a a meal that will work um, we have some fast meals that we can pull together in like 15 minutes if we have to hurry real quick one of our favorites is like tater tot casserole and if you've got the meat cooked then you can just throw it together in like 15 minutes. It takes a little longer to bake, but anyway, those are some of the meals that we usually always have on hand. We'll have the recipe for tater tot casserole later, so have your paper and pencils ready. While the pantry is relatively full as seen here, the troops have returned from the latest invasion of the grocery store and are ready to show you what a really full pantry looks like. Hi, you guys have fun with me. families, the amount of work these kids have done just unloading the van would pretty much finish them for the day. But filling this pantry up to the brim, that was just for fun. The real work comes in the form of what are officially known around here as jurisdictions. Our jurisdictions are our chores. We have to like um, clean, we have certain places like I do the laundry. Each one of us has like a a room or a few, quite a few rooms that we will clean. My jurisdiction is the laundry, the boys' room, and the boys' bathroom. The living room and the girls' room and my parents' room. I do the trash in the boys' room and the boys' bathroom. I think it's fun to help. Well, most of the time, anyway. <laughs> On some things I don't like, like when I have to clean around the toilet in the boys' bathroom. Laundry. Remember, that's on the Duggars' list of most asked questions. Okay, this is our laundry room. And um, these are all of the buckets. Every child has a bucket with their own name on it. And it keeps mainly the clothes that they use on a daily basis, um, probably about five days worth of like um, underclothes and socks and um, then the little one's pants. And then in the clothes closet is where we have all of the shirts and the pants and their other outfits. The way we, we tend to do our clothing is making life as simple as we possibly can for laundry purposes and for organization reasons. And the girls wear white socks 
and uh, the boys wear black socks. All of our children, not just our girls, but boys and girls alike, our goal is to draw attention to our countenance, to our face, and that helps us to decide what things we wear and what things are modest and, and appropriate. This master schedule is central to the general flow of life in the Duggar home. From work to worship, school time to free time, pick a child and you can see what their goals are for the day. The key word here is goals. We may never accomplish everything in one day that is on our master schedule. It would be a miracle if everything went off perfectly. But there's a goal. At least there's a goal. We know we're going somewhere. When we return, there's at least one more J name that will soon join the Duggar lineup. Strangely enough, Michelle and Jim Bob may actually spend more individual time with their kids than many parents. There's no television, no internet, no Walkmans. That leaves plenty of time for good old-fashioned conversation. And the children are around the house more than the average kids because home is also school. Yes, you are looking at not only the mom, the lead buddy, but also the head teacher. Okay, our law resource for today, um, <clears throat> we're going to be going through learning about bankruptcy laws, okay? And Joy, bankruptcy doesn't mean you go to the bank and, and you're, you're at a bank. Bankruptcy is when somebody is really having hard financial times and maybe they're um, not able to pay their bills. In addition to schoolwork, Part of every young Duggar's training is learning to play two instruments, piano and violin. Although the youngest in this bunch hasn't graduated to a real violin yet. regular intervals, all the school-aged children take standardized state tests to ensure they're on track. But the Duggars see the number one benefit of homeschooling happening away from the dining room turned classroom. I really feel like I'm learning more now than I ever did when I was in school. And it is so much more fun because when we get to a place that we don't understand something, we go search it out together. Today, the Duggars are on a field trip learning about some elements of home construction. First stop is a demonstration of a new kind of spray-on insulation made of soybeans. So, how is everybody? Say hello, Good. Mr. Cronkite. You ready for a field trip? Yes, we yes, are. Sir. Looking forward to this. Before we go in, I want to give everybody a little filter mask to wear, okay? No problem. With homeschooling, it gives you the ability to show your children hands-on how things work instead of just reading it out of a book. And you can show them uh, a manufacturing plant where they make something and you can also take them to somewhere where they're using that product to benefit all of us. It's good for our children to see all these different processes and how people are working together to benefit others and how people are coming up with creative ideas. With the parents and all these kids uh, tailing on behind them from one height down to another looks kind of like a geese or ducks all in a row and and so they bring a smile to people's face and and I think joy to people's hearts. They've got to be very cooperative people and very non-selfish people in order to make it work and it does work. It started out like liquid and look at what so it this has a... Now you may be wondering if this field trip about new home construction is purely theoretical. Not a chance. Clearly the family outgrew their small house about six babies back. But there's good news on the horizon, actually on the crest of that hill. No, that's not a small hotel or large restaurant. It's the Duggars' future home and our next lesson. Well, about a year and a half ago, we started here doing some dirt work and clearing this side off 
and we decided to build a house out in the country. It's going to be about 7,000 feet, which will give us about three times the amount of space that we have currently. We thought this would be a good family project. That's right, family project. With only occasional help from friends and experts, this house is being built pure Duggar mind and muscle. That is not to say there weren't doubts early in the process. When number one son Josh first heard of this construction plan, he had other ideas. First, I was kind of like, oh, okay, we try it, you know, and we started, and I was like, maybe we should just, like, hire this stage done. So we, we did the steel, and then he says, I said, well, why don't we hire somebody to do the roof? And he said, well, I think we can do it. And I was like, we've never done this before. You know, it's really dangerous. And he's like, well, I think we can do it. So we did it, and I said, oh, we did it. You know, the next stage and the next day, I kind of said, well, okay, well, this, well, I think we can do it now, you know, so I'm trying to get that, that confidence, too. But now on the drywall, I still think we should hire that done, so... <laughs> Although most of the construction tasks have been handled by Jim Bob and oldest sons Josh and John David, at points, the entire clan has gotten into the act. The cement floor is heated with hot water piping installed as a family project one cold fall weekend. Hi, Bob, Joy. <laughs> Today, the support is coming in the form of a picnic at the new home site. In charge of this meal and most others are Duggar daughters Jill, Jana, Jessa, and Ginger. On the menu is one of Dad's favorites. Get your pencils. Tater tot casserole. Divide evenly into two large roasting pans, four pounds of ground turkey with 12 pounds of tater tots, eight cans of cream of mushroom soup, four cans evaporated milk, some onion powder, salt and pepper. Cook it for an hour at 400 degrees, and there you have it. Enough tater tot casserole to feed the family. Eight bags of corn and a dozen or so oranges sectioned, a few gallons of water, and this picnic is ready to hit the road to the new homestead. With three of the menfolk at the new home site, the rest of the Duggars can fit into the family van. Believe it or not, this is not their main car. That's over there, the family bus. We'll take a ride in that later. When we come back, the mystery of the new baby will be solved. Is it a boy or a girl? Although today is starting like every other, with a family prayer, this is no ordinary day. This morning, the family finds out if it will be a new brother or a sister. Okay, guys, we're getting ready to go to have the ultrasound done. And now this isn't actually getting the baby out. It's going to be another three months before the baby comes out. But we're just going to get to see whether it's a boy or girl or whether it's twins. And it's going to be a really exciting time. If you imagine this process has become routine for the family, you are incorrect. They can't wait to find out if they'll be welcoming a new baby brother or baby sister into the fold. Yes. You can sit by one row. You have to sit by one row. I can't. I need a window open. Guys, y'all want to sing some songs? Yeah. you get there about 10 feet. The long-awaited answers to the burning questions of what and how many new Duggars will be added to the family are about to be revealed. Even the Duggars' midwife, Mari, who's performing the ultrasound, can't help but have an opinion. We need a girl this time because there's too many boys in this family. Okay. Well, and this is the spine. The head is down. So far, I can only see one child that looks like a nice, normal size. So I think it's just going to be one. There's an arm, placenta, and the fluid. you see anything else in there? <laughs> I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> it takes just I'm still working head down. Jessica, can you hold up Jerry so oh. you can see? 
Another baby brother Duggar will soon be here. And boys, girls, mom and dad all agree this is cause for a celebration. As you might expect by now, even a trip to a restaurant involves some shrewd calculation and perfect timing. Is it a coincidence that it's kids' night at the local home cooking restaurant? We'll never know. Well, I know she usually has, Mrs. Duggar usually have her list together for me, and we just go down the list and hope that we don't miss anything. I haven't seen not another family <laughs> with 14 kids. However, last week they came in with another group who had eight kids also, and boy, it, they just filled the entire place up together. <laughs> That family of eight kids are the Holtz. Father Jim has known Jim Bob for years. I met Jim Bob Duggar. He and I grew up together. We went to Shiloh Christian High School together from seventh grade on. We were going to sell books together in Kansas, uh, Bibles and encyclopedias. The Holtz also share the Duggars' religious convictions. When the families get together, it's a chance for the kids and adults to relate to people who live life the way they do. Not an easy thing to find. Which leads us to a common question. How will the Duggars handle the delicate issue of dating? With lead son Josh, age 16, this issue is about to become more than theoretical. We have met others that um, there might be an interest among our children, you know, they spend time together, uh, never alone, for one thing, just boy and a girl alone. I, ideally, we're in groups, and they usually are together uh, with others when we're f visiting with, with friends and, and that sort of thing. And so, um, in that respect, it's a protection for their heart, too. I think I don't look at it as much as dating as I do looking for a lifelong partner. And I think that you can give your heart away to so many. And I think that if you're gonna give your heart away, you need to be giving it to someone who's gonna love you and care about you and not someone who's gonna simply get carried away with their emotions. Our goal is for each one of our children to find that special person, just like I did. And we really believe that God's created that person already for them. The friendship that Duggars and Holtz share extends beyond cookouts and skating parties. <laughs> The two families compose the core of what amounts to a homegrown church. Every Sunday, the Duggar living room is transformed into a meeting hall. We just get together every week and we encourage each other and we pray together and study the Bible and it's just a neat little fellowship. The service at the Duggars and the home of the Duggars, the spirit is very sweet and the whole church is like a big family. There have been times this small church meeting has swelled to over 100. One more reason to look forward to that new house. But long before the new house is complete, yet another Duggar will be added to the old one. But there has been a last minute change of heart. Not about the baby, but what to call him. Judah Benjamin has been replaced. This boy will be Jackson Levi. And the time to meet him is at hand. I think we're ready. Bob up at 3.30 in the morning and told him that I thought I was in labor. And I said, is this it? And she said, yes. And uh, a woman said, 14 children, uh, when they say this is it, you take them to the hospital. So, <laughs> so I uh, went and we got all of her stuff together. All the children were asleep. And so we didn't wake them up to let them know that we were leaving because we thought we might come home still. The house was dark, everything was quiet, and we just kind of tiptoed out the door and headed to the hospital. At that point, um, we were excited, wondering, is this the time or is this just maybe the beginnings of, of what could be Braxton contractions or whatever, but we were gonna find out for sure with the ultrasound. They checked her and said the baby was uh, transverse. And so they said it would probably have to be a C-section. And so Michelle prayed and 
I was able to turn the baby a little bit and then the baby kept flipping around back and forth. And For quite a while, we just tried to work to get him to go where he was needing to go. But at, at the point we decided to go ahead with the C-section was when his little heart rate dropped. I said, I'm ready to get this baby here, C-section. Incredibly, baby number 15 is only the second C-section Michelle has had. The first was with her first set of twins. After a spinal block is given to allow her to remain awake for the procedure, she is taken to the OR with Jim Bob close by. Okay, we'll get him out one way or another. A transverse position means the baby is laying sideways. It's not uncommon in women who've had as many children as Michelle. But after some wrangling, young Jackson Levi is welcome to the world. There we go. Seven pounds and eight ounces of pure lung power. <laughs> They did the C-section, and the first time I saw Jackson, he was just so beautiful. Uh, he came out fine, and, and he's healthy, and Michelle's healthy, and we're just so grateful uh, for this new addition to our family. Finally, it's time for Jackson Levi to be introduced to the clan. Some of the older kids have seen more births than some families have in six or seven generations. But every birth is just as exciting. Jackson doesn't know it yet, but he may well live to be the most hugged baby in Arkansas history with that many brothers and sisters to tend to him. I love children. They are a gift and a blessing, and I couldn't imagine life without one of them. As Michelle prepares to take Jackson home, he's blissfully unaware that he may be experiencing the last few moments of quiet he has in a long time. But if his brothers and sisters are any gauge, that won't bother him a bit. After a couple days of R&R &R in the hospital, it's time for Michelle and Jackson to get home. Hey, guys. Hey. Don't hug this too much. No matter how many times this scene has been played at the Duggar home, it's always new and exciting. When we return, we'll give you an update on the Duggar family adventures over the past year. I'm Does Fly. You want proof? Just take a guess who this big fella is. We'll even give you a hint. His name starts with a J. That's right, it's Baby Jackson, better known as Toddler Jackson. In the years since Jackson was born, a lot has happened. You're probably thinking one change is where the family lives. But you know how it is when you're trying to build a 7,000 square foot house with your own hands. Things are taking a bit more time than they had hoped. And with the new house still not complete, the families found themselves in a bit of a pickle. They had already sold the house they were living in to the church next door, and the church's expansion project can wait no longer. We found out about a month ago that we were gonna to have to move out of this house, and the church had been so nice to let us stay here while we were working on building our other house. We didn't quite get it finished in time. Uh, we searched for a month to find a house that, that someone would rent to us. Finally, we found a house that is going to be part of a development where in a few months the property's gonna be sold, the house is gonna be removed, and they didn't mind renting it to us. The house was doomed for demolition anyway. Why not let the Duggars' homegrown wrecking crew start the deconstruction? But first, they have to get moved out of the old house. In the old days, when a family needed a new barn, everyone from miles around would get together and have what they call a barn raising. Well, the Duggars' moving plan is something like that in reverse. There's excitement because we know we're working toward a goal that we've been working for for quite a while. And so there's excitement in that. But of course, every time we drive by here, there's going to be the feeling of wanting to pull in the driveway. You know, this is 
home, but it's it's changing. I'm trying to go through and label most of the, the items as to which room they go in, and then when they get to the new house, there's labels on the walls and on the doors of each room, so it explains what room is what and where things go. With everything settled into the rental house, what better time uh, to pack David? everyone into the family RV and head for Texas for an annual gathering with their fellow homeschoolers. With 17 of us to, to transport and then all the clothes and all the getting ready stuff and then all the pills, blankets and shoes, socks and all that, it takes a, it takes a couple of trailers to haul all of it plus the, the van and the motor home. And does everybody have everything they need? Yes. Yes. Okay, we don't want to forget anybody. We dress everyone in red so that we can keep up with everyone when we go on a trip. If we have to, you know, get out and, and move around, we don't want to lose anyone. And this way, we can quickly spot all of our group easily. <laughs> As they hit the road with Jim Bob at the helm of the big rig, a trailer in tow, and son Josh and some of the older kids following in the van, everything was smooth sailing for the first 10 miles. About three miles onto the interstate, I heard that bell start squealing again, and so uh, I was able to rev it up a little bit, and it sounded like it quit, but I guess it actually it just came off. Does that go right into the block or something? Yeah. Whew, it's getting hot there. Here recently, we got like our van and stuff. It's a little bit newer, but we used to have a lot of old, older stuff, so we got to learn to work on it a lot. But after another lesson in auto mechanics from Dad, a little sweat, and a new fan belt, the crew was on the road again. What time is it, Michelle? Uh, it is 11.49. We have okay. 9.07. Okay, so we're about three hours into the trip and 10 miles down the road. <laughs> when the family finally arrived at the conference, they were able to spend the week with over 3,000 other homeschoolers who share the same values and lifestyle. There are a number of other families that we meet here that we, you know, keep in contact with from year to year. And it's just a really fun place to come, to be encouraged. Other families have a lot of similar goals in training their children and, and teaching and all. The event offered another rare opportunity for the family, a chance to actually blend in with some families that might just give them a run for their money in the baby-making department. And speaking of babies... Number three, Josh. Jim, Bob, and Michelle have a little surprise. Actually, surprise might be stretching things. How about a somewhat predictable announcement? Yep, number 16 is on the way. Or who knows, maybe number 16 and 17. As usual, everyone is anxious to find out what the baby is, boy or girl. So it's off to get an ultrasound. This time, a high-tech 3D model. I want the girl. All the girls. So y'all want more brothers? You don't think you have enough brothers? I'd say the odds are it's probably boys. We did. I'd say it's a boy, but So do you want me to tell them? Yeah, go ahead. It looks like it's a girl. That's fair. That's a girl part. Yeah. It looks like a girl. A baby girl. When it's all said and done, the kids are happy no matter what the gender of their newest sibling. And rest assured, when Duggar number 16 finally makes her grand entrance into the world, this group will be ready. I think that possibly nobody else in the